Hi, it's March 18th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm Mike Stanton, and I'm here with Grant Dewey, BAM's Head of Municipal Capital Markets. Grant, thank you for being here today. Um, really interesting week in the markets. Uh, the long-awaited move by the Federal Reserve to start tightening rates uh, happened finally. Uh, 25 basis point uh, hike, uh, slightly less than some people thought a few weeks ago. Of course, that was before the, the war in Ukraine. Um, this was uh, largely as accepted by the markets. How did people react? You know, I think their somewhat cautious kind of wait and see approach, Mike, was, you know, pretty well accepted uh, by the market. And one of the Fed's kind of four mandates is maintaining stability in the in the, in the financial uh, market. So they certainly achieved that. Uh, there has not been um, a lot of volatility since then. But, you know, obviously, as you mentioned, the economic impact of, uh, you know, the Russia sanctions you know, has affected probably primarily commodity prices. I think maybe there's a little bit of further risk to um, you know, to growth, uh, depending on the extent uh, China um, provides any military support. So obviously, I think that would have much wider uh, global growth uh, implications. So I think the Fed just wants to take a bit of a cautious, um, uh, dovish approach, and uh, and the market market was happy with that. You know, on the municipal side. You know, outflows are are persisting. We've got um, you know it's contributing to a lot of selling pressure. There's less liquidity across, you know, kind of the, the entire rating spectrum. You know, you had Calgios, you had a large New York dorm, highly rated dorm pit deal. Uh, you had UMass Builder again, highly rated. All those deals kind of struggled to attract uh, buyers, and there were other deals that actually uh, were postponed. So, uh, you know, the conditions that cause uh, deals to get delayed, uh, you know, or spreads to widen to attract buyers are the same conditions that drive strong secondary insurance business. So we've had, you know, we've been very, uh, very active um, adding BAM insurance to bonds in the secondary and again, across all investment grade rating categories. So there's growing risk off uh, sentiment in the market, and that certainly has highlighted to investors the benefits um, that BAM insurance brings uh, uh, in terms of added liquidity and stability. So we've had a couple uh, near record weeks, uh, things uh, we haven't seen since uh, March and April of 2020. And, and uh, so um, it's a good environment for our business, uh, and we've seen a pretty significant uh, adjustment in rates since the beginning of the year. And we're seeing some of that spill over into the primary market as well. Uh, last week on this video, we talked about the Mount Diablo uh, school district transaction from uh, California. Weren't sure if that was going to be used, uh, going to use insurance on that. In the end, uh, about two thirds of that transaction, 54 million out of 75 million came with insurance. Uh, we also saw insurance on the, the Benton, Washington Regional Public Water Authority. That's a, a frequent user of BAM insurance. Also sold uh, Green Star bonds last week uh, to finance the build out of their water system. Uh, that was $49 million, just a shade under 50. And uh, the Lindenwald, uh, New Jersey Board of Education, uh, was $33 million uh, priced by Huntington Securities in the uh, competitive market. So uh, continuing to see upticks uh, really across the country in terms of uh, interest in insured bonds in the primary. Yeah, so, so looking ahead, uh, going into the quarter end, are there any uh, specific considerations that uh, people you're talking to on, uh, on Wall Street or uh, on the buy side are, are, are thinking about as they uh, prepare for March 31st? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, you know, you did have the Puerto Rico uh, settlement, so there was a lot of new cash uh, and restructured Puerto Rico uh, securities that came into the market. So there's been a lot of trading there. I think. I think there are mutual funds and hedge funds that are repositioning uh, ahead of quarter end, uh, uh, depending on on their view there. So uh, we've seen a lot of secondary trading act activity, uh, far more than we saw throughout 2021. And so it's a uh, very active market and, and we expect more of the same. And that's a great point because we are talking about, you know, yields right now are at their highest level since April 2020, but the feel of the market is a completely different than it was then. Uh, issuers are still able to bring their transactions. The market's behaving orderly. Uh, rates are higher, but it's uh, it's still a functioning market as opposed to, you know, the, the gross uncertainty we felt uh, at the early days of the COVID pandemic. Right. And the last point I'll make is that, you know, credit spreads have hung in there reasonably well year to date. It really has been, uh, there's been kind of a, a cheapening really across the board uh, from uh, the lower investment grade paper uh, uh, on up to AA. So I think uh, that's a little bit different than COVID where it was 
uh, you know, a credit driven event. This is really more of a rate shock that has uh, caused quite a bit of selling in fixed income assets. Great. Well, thanks for that insight, Grant. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Great. Thanks, Mike.